Live in Shadowmere Studios, this is the Talkie Box Podcast. Some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's Talkie Box. That's it's gold. I love it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Write it down. Run with that. Oh wait, no. Cross it off. <clears throat> Run with that. Cross it off. Cross it off. Move cross it off page. your master list yeah. of things you definitely made up on your own. Oh man, so a new week. Yeah. A new day. Mm, I yeah. Went, I went the wrong way with that. That's fine. All right. I learned right before we started the show that uh, Justin here. I've never seen any of the John Wick movies. This is true. By any, I mean either. I, yep, neither. You seen any either? Of them. No. They're so damn good. Okay. So damn good. I know there's something about a puppy. Yep. The first one That's all is I better. Know. Aren't they? The, the second one is is more. Aren't they Disney? Packed. I don't. I don't know if they're Disney. Am I getting this mixed could, up with another thing? I think you are. Yep. You might be thinking of John Carter. Yes. Yeah. Of Mars. Yeah. yeah. This is John Wick of Keanu Reeves. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, Keanu basically Reeves. Basically, we learned that if you kill Keanu Reeves' dog, he will murder everyone he's ever seen. I like think that's everyone fair. Everyone that he comes in contact with. Yeah. I mean, you guys have met Cosmo. Yeah. If somebody were to inflict harm on Cosmo, I mean... Yeah. It could get pretty gruesome. Everyone dies. But Keanu Reeves, it's, what, it's one of the things I've always found funny about Keanu Reeves as like an actor is he always plays like these badass, you know, tough... Beat him up kind of guys, mm. but in reality, from all accounts I've seen, he's just like literally the nicest guy oh, yeah. in the in the entire world. Yeah, like he's just a super nice guy, forwards and backwards. Like mm-hmm. gives away a lot of his money, and like gives up his seat on the subway for people who want to sit down. Like mm-hmm. just a real stand up guy. He, he apparently huh. like he <laughs> would, see what you did there because he gives up his seat. Yeah, he apparently like sit with homeless people like bring food to homeless people and like sit and talk with them and like learn about their lives and stuff yeah back when he was very young when he was like still first starting out with with acting and stuff he would do that yeah. um hats off to keanu reeves hashtag yeah. keanu reeves stand-up guy speaking of keanu reeves uh promo image showed up for bill and ted three okay so i'm a little skeptical it wasn't this. on april fool's day it wasn't on april fool's day but that's when it got the most attention i feel like Maybe it did get a lot of attention, and it kind of like raised some skepticism. I mean, I'd be totally down. I mean, because what's Alex Frost been doing for the last thirty years? Directing? You mean Alex Winters? Alex, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> Alex Winters. And yeah, he actually has been doing been directing, directing and stuff. Yeah, I was, I was in a, I was an extra in a movie that he directed. Really? Yeah. What was this movie? It was a, a made-for-TV live-action Ben Ten movie from hmm. Nickelodeon. I think it was Nickelodeon. It was a Cartoon Network. Uh, oh, ben Ten's Nickelodeon. And. um my scene got cut, which no, sucked. Mine. It's but Cartoon Network. It's Cartoon Network. I don't know. Yeah. Thanks, live studio audience. <laughs> no problem. Um, but yeah, he was he was the director for it. And I just love the idea of a live studio audience that's just one person answering <laughs> back. Thanks, live studio. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> the the live studio audience just is there with like that one person who's like they've you've elected, been delegated. They've elected a spokesperson. Yeah. <laughs> just like There's the foreman of right. the studio audience. Exactly. They're like, we yeah. of the studio audience say no problem. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Single laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we all feel. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> glorious. So, uh, yeah, uh, Keanu in um, oh, Bill real and quick, Ted. real quick. Uh, I'm Dave, the host, <laughs> and we have uh, Kate. I'm Kate and Justin. Yeah, and Jason. Jason, real yeah. quick. Yeah, real quick. Real all quick, right. Jason. Real quick, Jason. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Bill and Ted. The first one was real time quick. traveling, no. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was uh, the second one. Yeah, the, yeah. S- the okay. second one. I, I literally just said Bill and Ted 3. I, I know, and I heard it, but at the same time, my mind just didn't make the leaps and bounds mm-hmm. it needed to. So, so, so the one leap <laughs> from one to two and two, two <laughs> yes. leaps. And the, the first one, they had the, the history exam, right? And they yeah. were going to fail high school. Mm-hmm. And, uh, had to put on the... and he was going to have to go to military yeah, school. Yeah, Ted was going to have to go to military school. Uh, and so uh, Rufus shows up uh-huh. in the nick of time. May he Rufus, rest in the, peace. The late George Carlin. Yeah. And he. Uh, Spoilers ha- for anybody who didn't see this back in 1985 F-U. or whatever. All right. It came if, out. You, if you hadn't seen it, you're not gonna. So he, he rises up out of the ground or whatever, comes from space or a dimensional door or whatever in a telephone booth. Mm-hmm. And it's a time traveling telephone booth. Time travel. Time and travel. so they put together this 
amazing historical presentation, Wild Stallion style. Yeah, Wild well, Stallion's being the just, band of theirs. Yeah, and they just go and they steal, kidnap, kidnap. <laughs> You know, whatever you call it when it's people. <laughs> and they get Steel. these they get these people. <laughs> That's right. From their times, they bring them back and they force them to do their history presentation or they will not take them back right. to their own time. They kidnap people through time and then like, hey, we need you to tell us how great current time is. And then there's so they get like princesses? Abraham Lincoln, Socrates, uh, Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc um, uh, well, it's Billy the Kid. Uh, who's the Napoleon? Because he had the the Sunday. Remember, he went yeah. and ate ice cream. And he went. To, he went to the 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 water park. Isn't it Attila the Hun too? Attila the Hun. Yep. Attila the Hun. He was in there. Um, and yeah, and yep. they, and they 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 do their and report they, and they pass and they and it's awesome and everybody loves it. They win just winning. Yeah, Teach they, everyone how to be excellent. Yeah, that what they say? Be, be excellent, excellent to each other. Be yeah. excellent to each other. Yeah. yeah. Because and apparently on, in the future, Wild Stallion's music is so awesome that yeah. it creates world peace. Not just world peace, universal peace. Universal peace. Yeah. And you find out how literal that is in the second movie. Which I have not seen. Which is... Uh, Alright, so well, hold on real quick. I'm going to list off some movie names and you have to tell me which ones sound right. Alright? Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Bill and Ted's Wacky Quest. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I feel like the third one... Probably sounds right. It is right. Okay. The first one was also right because that was the original movie. Yeah. Well, I've seen that one. <laughs> yeah. So. Now, if the third one is called Wacky Quest, you're gonna feel real silly. <laughs> I sure am. Silly but expedition. Also, but also really, really excited yeah. that they watched the show and picked my title. Mm-hmm. And went with such a <laughs> wacky. <laughs> yeah. So in the in the second movie, you got Bill and Ted. Some dude comes back in back from the future. Back from the future. Not back to the future. Back from the future. From the future. To, Another great movie. To though. kill Bill and Ted, mm -hmm. because he wants to be an asshole. Yep. And so he makes these robot versions of them uh, to kill them, and then they go to hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the then, robot versions are successful. Yeah. In their assassination plot. Sorry if I'm spoiling this movie that came out in the early '90s, and then uh, they go to hell. They they meet the devil. They do. They they play against the Reaper in like multiple games. Yep. Mm -hmm. They keep winning, and he's finally like, "Fine, I'll take you where you need to go." They go to heaven. They meet God. God. Yeah. And God. Oh my them, God! It's God. God gives them some aliens to help them make good robot versions of them cool. to fight the evil robot versions of them, so that they can win back their girlfriends. So very as you can, straightforward. Yeah, <laughs> very clean cut, very nice precisely plot written yeah. plot line. I see where we, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so the third really one, devoid of non speculations. Um, okay. Back well, in time, forward in time. I don't know. Like they have kids. That that was they showed that at the end of the second movie. Hmm. They got married. They had kids. And just from, I mean, they're obviously older people now. They yeah, have yeah, aged. They've aged years. significantly. They so. have aged. Keanu looks the same. hysterical to me, honestly. <laughs> like just a, he looks exactly the same, but with a beard. It's yeah, just he looks beard. just like he did back in the 1400s. <laughs> just so, yeah. exactly the same. <laughs> uh, what he's winter's a, a treasure. Winter's a good you. deal heavier now. He's put on a little bit of weight, but he's all you know. He's not a teenager anymore. He's you know in his 40s, if not if not probably. I think he's probably pushing 50. He's in his 50s. Um, I would look it up, but I can't. Okay, yeah. so because <laughs> you don't have the internet on there, because I don't have the internet on here. Yeah, I mean I could, yeah. but I'm not going to. No. So what would what would older, uh, more settled Bill and Ted be doing? They've oh man, uh, probably still with their failing band. With their band? Well, their band isn't failing. Well, that's anymore. true. They it's did wildly successful. Because according to Rufus, yeah, you know, Universal Peace, yeah. Comes from this band, so apparently. So what's to say that you know, like, there's an uprising against the the Wild Stallions mm -hmm. um, because they didn't want there no more was peace. Something that altered oh. their timeline since then. That could be it. I mean, something altered the pretty timeline. Pretty much what happened in the, for the second one. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't. I want to hit too hard on yeah. the other ones. So I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe there's another band that's trying to take that's, their. That's uh, what I was thinking. Like. Title. An, some kind of upstart band yeah. that, uh, you know, maybe they 
uh, trend more towards war and things like that, and they're trying to like. But they're also war. called wild stallions, and so there's like a mix of which one is it? Mm-hmm. I feel like. <laughs> But they spell wild with like uh, with an I with an I. <laughs> I feel like though they're they're gonna make it easy for anyone to pick up, so they're not gonna rely too heavily on the source material. Right. I think they're just they're gonna throw a shit ton of Easter eggs oh, yeah. at everybody. But I think they're gonna. I feel like it makes more sense from a business standpoint to mm-hmm. make it a movie that kind of stands on its own. Yeah, that you they... can watch independent. You mm-hmm. don't have to have seen the other Bill and Ted's right. and just get it. Yeah, they won't even call it Bill and Ted Three. No, they'll call it especially Bill and if Ted's there's one wacky quest, one John Wick <laughs> shout out scene in it where like Keanu finds mm-hmm. a pistol and like clears an <laughs> an urban environment yeah. very strategically and Double well choreographed. And... Yeah. yeah, does some kind of a leg takedown where he uh, shoots him in the head and then shoots another guy in the head and yeah. everybody gets shot in the head. Keanu's that guy you want in the apocalypse. Real cool, calm and collected, but he actually no he's actually he trained to learn all of those moves. Oh, like, yeah. Dude could clear a room. Like I'm Keanu sure. Reeves could clear a room if you put yeah. him in that situation. I, I don't think he'd want to, but yeah. I think if like you were in the apocalypse situation, but like the Keanu, person. there's a whole bunch of zombies in that there room. What do you think? He would just kick down the door and start taking them down. I think that's the person you want, though, is the person who doesn't want to be violent. I'd be really wary of the guy yeah. who just loves massacring people. Right. He doesn't want to be violent, but he can be very good at it. Yeah, don't like, close talk. Don't kill his dog. Yeah. I mean, if I had Keanu Reeves in the apocalypse, I'd probably use him as a face man to like rally the people because everybody Ooh. would already recognize him. Oh yeah, he'd definitely be a like, leader to throw yeah, him not, into the mix. He's not a talker though. Like, he's oh. not. He's not that motivational speaker. Well, I could be guy. like his vizier. <laughs> and My liege. Hey. And and Jason gets all the money and and, then, and then tell him to like. Um, you My know. liege, it would be in your best interest to steal their water supply. <laughs> That's how you get punched in the face by Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I don't know. I think, you know, it would Whoa. help me. If I'm in a post apocalyptic <laughs> scenario and I've got to join up with people's teams, I'm like, oh, this guy's got Keanu Reeves. Yeah. All right. Because he would still be famous. Yeah. Mm. You'd still know. I've heard was. talk across the land of this. Keanu. And it'd, be, and it'd be funny because like survivor groups would work out like that. So like one survivor group would have like Justin Bieber. Yeah. And like another survivor group would have like you know, they they get split up. Token celebrities. Token yeah. celebrities <laughs> that are like the the, the We're assuming, figurehead. Though, that these celebrities had the wits and the ability to survive. Oh, yeah, yeah. or point, the money, yeah. or the you know, like a professional driver bodyguard who yeah. died kind of only moments ago. Money you, you, you just anymore. have to pray that you get a really good celebrity. I mean, yeah. nobody wants to end up with like Kevin Spacey, like or they, Kim they, Kardashian. She's kind of useless. No, they they they, they want to end up with somebody who's going to have some gravitas. Yes, mm-hmm. going to help wiggle them I mean, out of some I'm shit. I'm not a 15 year old dude anymore, so I'm not afraid of Kevin Spacey. Like, it's about that influence. Was too dark. <laughs> I want um. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because of the homosexual advances on yeah. kids. Oh, That's what I was yeah. making reference to. I yeah, want Morgan Freeman no, I, on my team so I'm he can just man. narrate all the badass things. You need, you need and to finish your went sentence. out onto the field mm-hmm. and she. Hold on. Hold on, he has to finish his sentence because what he said there sounded really bad. <laughs> what? Until he finishes the sentence. Yeah, I don't know. I got cut off and. Yeah, you're, sure. you're like. Morgan. I think he's really fantastic. Is oh, what you got, and I, I think, think you were he is say, a fantastic actor. actor. He is a yeah, fantastic you know. actor. He does amazingly well in House of Cards. Yeah. Hmm? Sorry, Morgan Freeman, go. I think I'd want him on my team. Just imagine Morgan Freeman narrating all the badass things you do in the apocalypse. <laughs> and there's Kate having her left arm devoured no. by the zombies. No, badass <laughs> things you do. <laughs> uh, I mean, most most of you know your your apocalypse life is going to be like like wandering around or something. So he'd just be behind you like. And they kept wandering through the desert. <laughs> like the Into Morgan. oblivion. Morgan, we get it. Like the Suddenly penguins. Suddenly it occurred to Dave that they should have taken a right instead of a left, but he kept trudging onwards. He, 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 he just keeps repeating himself every 15 minutes like, <laughs> and they continued to wander aimlessly through the <laughs> desert. Morgan Freeman's watching and this now. And they continue to wander like aimlessly me. through the desert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like we should ask our viewers to put up who their favorite token celebrity would be in the apocalypse. Ooh. I think Michael Caine would be a good one, too. Michael Caine? Yeah, yeah okay. I, know who that is. I mean, he seems um, like a 
kind of a liability. Okay. <laughs> I feel like every Why? episode I'm old? on, there's always some reference old. that's made that I don't understand, and then we spend time explaining it to me. Michael Caine was, uh, wasn't he Alfred? He was Alfred, yes. Yeah. Alfred. Yes, in, in, in the Christopher Nolan Batmans. He was also Austin Powers' father. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. In Gold um, Member. Okay, okay. And he has been in an numerous number of movies. I think I recognize him. A lot of movies. Him. Very recognizable Alfred British in, voice. In, in. Yeah. Christopher Nolan's very right co- very thick Cockney esque. But speaking of Austin Powers, I mean, obviously, The Spy Who Shagged Me is the, the best one. I don't remember those movies very well. Really, like, they're all so the same ago, movie, pretty much. They're, it's it's very formulaic, yeah. with very campy jokes, but it hits, it plays. I found out recently plays. how those movies came about. It's in a Wayne's it, World, but well, basically, no. uh, Mike Myers formed a band called Ming T which you see in the movies. Hmm. And he created this persona of Austin Powers and then made a movie out of that. Hmm. Like, that was the whole thing. That's how he came up with it. A woman wrote it. Just going to say that. Throw that out there. It was a woman's idea. What's that, audience? It was a woman's idea. Not Austin Powers, the guy who made it himself. It was a woman's idea to come up with that. Which woman? I don't fucking know. I'm just saying. It's a lady. We got some harsh language from the studio (laughs) audience. A A lady did it. Uh, So, kudos. To ladies doing stuff. If only there were someone off screen who could look up information that we had gaps in our knowledge on. Yeah. But there's here. but there's nobody like that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's a pipe dream. Um, yeah. yeah. Michael Caine. I think it'd be good. Michael yeah. Caine? That'd be your token celebrity in the apocalypse? Oh. No, I just think he'd be good. Uh, my token celebrity... If I had uh, this... M- Right now, Terry Crews. I was gonna go Dwayne Rock Johnson. Yeah, that's a good one too. Ooh, that's a Dwayne real good one. the Rock. Yeah, that's a good one. Because a, a you know, like those he's, muscles. He's recognizable. Yeah. Everybody B, loves him too. He's a gargantuan tank man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, which, which to be honest, so is Terry Crews. <laughs> so is Terry Crews. <laughs> and Terry Crews oh is God. Terry See, Crews like, is actually like, hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Terry, so Terry I may Crews actually did. enjoy hanging with Terry Crews more. Yeah, he's in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Um, he was he's in, in the, the old spice, spice commercials. commercials. The really big muscular guy. Like really, really girls. like. Is Brooklyn Nine Nine the the show Andy about Samberg, um, cops? The one that funny makes police fun station. of. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've seen that. Is yeah. he the? He's, he's the bald muscular black detective. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. I just don't see, know people by names ever. Gotcha. I, I mostly know people by faces. If yeah. I see their face, I'm like, there's oh, the that guy. one see, movie like... where he plays like the worst up and coming rapper ever. Uh, it's got, it's like a white kid and he's like a rich suburbanite who gets like Malibu's lost. most one. Oh, yes. Yeah. There it is. Thank Malibu's you. He was also in Idiocracy. One. He was, uh, Camacho. he was, pre- yeah, he was President, President Camacho. Camacho. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, See, like, yeah. if we're going with big tank guys, I feel like Terry Crews would be great. I wouldn't mind going with, like, a Dave Bautista because yeah. he seems like he'd be a pretty cool yeah, guy. Yeah. But those but jokes otherwise, aren't going to be nearly as good. Other, <laughs> no, I, otherwise I feel like I just have to go with uh, the national treasure Keanu Reeves. I feel like yeah. it's a solid pick. Yeah. Or Arnold. Arnold just got heart Arnold. surgery. I yeah. love you, Arnold. But he's still the I mean he's still Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's still he Arnold might not Schwarzenegger. Be the, the Terminator. He is literally that same person. Yeah. He However, could actually his be the governor. Middle body is not. Yeah. We could give, him, about, like, give him a patch. The Walking Dead governor. Give him a patch. Yeah. Call him the governor. Everybody will get it on both edges of the yeah. sword. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, and he can probably aim a gun pretty well. Entendre. Double entendre. I'm sorry. It's French. Whatever. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> other topics. Yeah. Let's, yes. I'm going to segue from that straight on into something, and now for something completely different. Here's something you really like. Uh, <laughs> the MIT, that's Massachusetts, right? Yeah, yeah. Massachusetts right. Institute of Technology. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, no, that's right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Massachusetts. Don't be sorry for knowing shit. Yeah. It's my state. It's my home state. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's why I asked you. Yeah. Um, so, MIT... They're, uh, the T is for technology, and they're big fans. They're, oh, uh, they're yeah. proponents of technology. So One might say, you know, it's what the whole institution was founded upon. You would think that, right? One would say. So I was doing some, uh, some poking around, mm-hmm. some sniffing on the old internets. Some sleuthing. And I was looking for interesting tech. 
Yeah. And I found a uh, an MIT. Uh, the MIT basically comes up with a top ten like uh, every year. Every year, of... up and coming technologies. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so I looked up the 2018 up and coming technologies. I wrote the list down. Mm -hmm. I read over them all so that I could. Explain yeah, I saw, them I saw that article or an article about it at least. Did you Did you read over it? I I like glossed over it a little bit, but I did. <laughs> what do you got? Um, so number one on the MIT top ten technological advances of yep. 2018, 3D metal printing. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, yes. Now. 3D printing has been around for mm -hmm. about 30 years or so, yeah. but it's always been Plastic. plastics. Yeah, it's uh, been, and now it's actually more readily available to private users rather than mm -hmm. just hobbyists and in industries. Our yeah. roommate actually has. One. Yeah, we got it, but at they, least uh, one in this in this building. It's pretty simple. They have gotten to the point now that because of like molecular bonding and the way that they can actually detail yeah. the intricacies of the the model that they print out, that they can make the metals stronger hmm. through 3D printing okay. than a lot of other like normal uh, smelting and machining modes and stuff yeah. like that. And not only that, but it's going to revolutionize uh, parts industries. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah all, all machine factories, all automobiles, all thinking. small electronics, anything like that, whenever you need a part rather than these giant warehouses to take up vast amount of space and are basically like just housing yeah. tons and tons of different crazy metal parts you can now just house these big super efficient 3d printing spaces right. i mean think about like engineers templates. think about engineers like you don't have to like go from a design to creating the machine to actually machine the parts to build it mm -hmm. like you can just Create a 3D model of each one of the parts that you need. Print it up. Yep. Slap it together. Now, it's going to speed up that that um, that innovation process yeah. quite a bit. Now, the only issue is that 3D printing does take time. Like it's not as fast as some people seem to think it is. Um, For now, it takes with, time. Right, but and I know with 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 just the plastics, it it takes some time. It, you know, it makes something very small. It still take like four or five hours. Uh, I can only imagine with with metal. And and these bigger projects, it would take much longer. Absolutely, but I'm sure over time it will, it will get, you know. That oh will... yeah, the process is. I think it's. I mean, it's just like anything else. The process is going to continue to be sped up mm -hmm. to a point that it is going to be like that. Beep beep beep. Zoof. There, there's your thing. That's yeah. what you need. But you and can actually design printing. them with working parts and stuff. Like so, now it's not just that you have to piecemeal everything out or whatever. Like now you can put in the specs for like an actual functional something okay. and it can, it can do that as well. That's pretty cool. Um, and, and it's only going to get better and more readily available for yeah. industry. And eventually, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what car you have. It doesn't matter any, like you don't ever have to worry about mm -hmm. not having the part right. as long as some as long as someone's software designed that part in has the some, spec. Uh, software, as yeah. long as the spec's there and you have the material. Yeah, as long as they have the specifics somewhere in some data stream, like they can yeah. grab it, print it up, ship it off that night or whatever. Yeah. I was just the... thinking about that. I have an older car. Um, it's a 98 Accord. And recently I had an issue with it. Which is, it was a very small minor piece. Um, but they stopped making them that way specifically. And I guess um, when they went to replace this part, the parts that the dealership houses don't look like the part that actually came out of my car anymore. So it took a few days to get my car back for what would have been like a simple, like maybe a two hour fix at most. It took several days because they were just waiting back on some dealership or some mechanic to come back and be like, oh yeah, we have that specific one. Yeah. Whereas if they had that technology available. Mm -hmm. And they, they do. It's just, it's currently pricey, but mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's coming down and it's, it's worth it. It's going to change industry. Oh, absolutely. Um, what about some other emerging technologies? Number yes. two on their list, artificial embryos. Yeah, that uh, was weird. No, no longer no longer do you need sperm and egg. Yeah. Like, they have used mouse stem cells. Mm -hmm. That is a very reminiscent of Huxley's Brave New World. Uh, and a lot of other science fiction uh, where, you know... 
no longer do people have to copulate right. to create. Um, but and they have not, of course, gone into human testing. No. That's well, still well. <laughs> Maybe they have. Above <laughs> board. Publicly. Above board, they have not gone into human testing. You want to go to, like, Brazil or some crazy place like that, you know, I'm sure. Why Brazil? Why it's Brazil? the craziest place on earth, man. Oh, okay. All right. yeah. Even more than Australia. Most people think it's Australia. No. Brazil. Okay. Check out a rainforest, man. It's fucking weird. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, artificial embryos, they basically took stem cells yeah. from a single mouse mm. and they were able to manipulate those stem cells uh, into self-organizing into uh, an embryo right and so basically they're they're super impressed because they knew that stem cells had an amazing amount of potential mm. for becoming anything. anything yeah but they didn't realize how much uh, inherited anything information that they maintain mm. because they can self-organize like to a certain extent and actually like once you start pushing them in one direction they'll just sort of be like oh that's what you want us to be mm. okay and they just become that i, I wonder wow. and I, I haven't looked this up but like could you do that with plant matter like is does, does, do plants have stem cells like that that can do that or is it only I'm sure. I'm, I mean, there's I mean, no there's no embryos. Well, right, but like <laughs> for plants, but uh, because I was thinking, like this would be a great pistol for and a stamen. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. You know, it would be great for for areas of of the world that don't have access Anthers? to a lot of a lot of good agriculture to be able to produce food this way. It'd be great and for. Uh, but would it for like some of its the, nutrient? I don't know. I mean, like you know, they they say that uh, you know honeybees mm. are going extinct. Yeah. And when they extinct, you know, one of the biggest issues we will face, like those those guys going extinct, it's the loss of face, pollination. Yeah. yeah, things aren't getting pollinated anymore. Well, Black so. Mirror figured that problem out. Yeah, with, but I mean, if you're able to just bees. with robot bees, but that's a lot of robot bees. That's yeah, a lot of robot bees. bees. But you know, I mean, shit, you can put them in your 3D metal printer <laughs> and just start <laughs> churning them out. Yeah. Um. So artificial or embryos just make these embryos out of you know. Yeah, exactly. That, that's or what we I'm could saying. be kinder like, to the environment. So they're they're I doing all we, kinds. We, of, we move past Kate. that. They're doing all kinds of testing on on the on mouse embryos, uh, but they are of I course. There's a lot of concern uh, about human testing because at what point does the embryo begin become real? Yeah. Like at what point are they testing on a on a human baby they've created through their own godlike machinations. Right. So, like... Now, now it, if which I would be from, from the similar article, to a clone, is what it sounds like. like yeah. It would be very similar to a clone in that... But uh, Rather than creating an adult clone, you're just using the very right. basic essence of life. But if I recall from the article, like, that embryo never grew into a full mouse. Right? Like uh, it, no. I don't even think they were allowed. Maybe not. To, to actually move it beyond the embryonic stage. All right, we got it. All right, all right cut it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See how it's it, a cruel, cruel. See how world. it wiggles when you poke it or whatever. Mm. Like that movie Life, where it kills everybody. Spoiler alert. I have no idea what you're talking about. You didn't see that movie Life? I don't think so. Oh man, where they find the alien, the crazy mm. life in in space. Yeah, oh, Ryan Reynolds. Eddie, yeah, no, Eddie Murphy and uh, Martin Lawrence. Okay. Yeah, yeah, where they go to prison in space yeah. and the alien <laughs> kills everybody. Yeah, and they spend their whole life there, and it's just a whole bunch of wacky antics yeah. between two very talented. Yeah, comedians. IMDb yeah. that all movies with the mo with the title Life, and then just make it into one movie. <laughs> yeah, Oprah Winfrey narrated it. Like space here. Yeah. Uh, smart cities, number three on the list. Now they've already had the idea of smart cities, but for the most part, they have all been put to the wayside because they either got priced out mm -hmm. uh, as far as like only the super elite would be able to live there yeah. or or it was just too many uh, difficulties as far as like logistics. Right. Um, however, Toronto, uh, you know, they're Canadian, so they're cutting hey. edge, <laughs> cutting edge Canadian cities. Yeah. And, uh, and they took like one of their boroughs and kind of 
And they're Ready Smart Tea. Yeah, yeah, they're they're basically they got some company out of New York that I can't remember the name of their company right now, and I apologize for that. Look it up. <laughs> uh, and they are hiring them to go in and create a smart city yeah. uh, in Toronto. And basically their plans are uh, every car is automated mm-hmm. and no one owns a car. You just... You just get in. You just get in and it takes you to where you need to go. And right. that's just part of the city. All mail and packages uh, are delivered by underground robots that basically have these like little tunnels underneath yeah. the city streets that they they run these tunnels and so anytime you need mail or any any little kind of wallies. delivery yeah. or anything like that like you you need something from the store like they drop it onto a robot and that robot <laughs> zips through these little tunnels mm. and gets to your house and then the robot uprising is quite literal at that point because they, yeah, the they just come up out of the ground and they're like oh we brought you flowers ah. pew, pew, pew. And they shoot you in the face. Yeah, but you get your Put flowers. So you still got the flowers. <laughs> They're not gonna not finish their mission. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was programming. They, have programming. <laughs> they gotta finish that, or otherwise they can't kill you. Yeah. So as long as you refuse to accept, yeah. I don't want those. Oh, uh, 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 I'm going back underground. Uh, Return to center. Pew pew. But those same pew, robot pew. tunnels will be used for uh, trash pickup. Yeah. For um, maintenance on you know different. Lights and whatever. Um, what are you shaking your head about? I'm shaking off a yawn, sir. Uh, there will, there will be. Sleeping. Thought you were upset about the trash pickup. <laughs> These damn <laughs> robots digging through my garbage. Oh, damn trash. <laughs> damn I'm trash a robots. Person. Trash bots. Yeah. So um, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, the entire city will be blanketed in like a very strong sort of Wi-Fi that's just, you can just pick it up no matter where you are. What about solar panels? Solar panels everywhere? Probably. Solar panels. Uh, I'm not sure. I have read something about how they're coming up with new uh, and improved uh, solar panels. Um, But I can't remember that. Cool. (laughs) Um, Let's see... Cloud AI yeah. is the number four thing. And basically AI right now, uh, artificial intelligence, mm-hmm. is only for your megatech, uh, your right. Amazons, your Googles, things like that. And they basically use it to uh, self-police their networks and things like that. Uh, but now you can use it for a robot uprising. Yeah. Getting rid of redundancies and coding and programming to streamline and make make things a lot easier, mm-hmm. but it's always no one's been able to work in the field of AI because these huge tech companies, you know, they only hire X amount of engineers to work on these projects, and, and then they buy up upstart AI, and companies. they buy up anybody else that's coming out. But yeah. but I mean, if you have an up and coming like AI firm, and then you know Apple or Google comes up, you'd be like, hey. Uh, We'll give you two billion dollars for your company and all of your work. And you're like, um, all right, yeah, two billion dollars sounds good. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Definitely, I can do that. I get, yeah, I can do that. I wasn't actually planning on doing this business. I just started the startup <laughs> so you guys would buy it from me. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so they are. They are I have now, a feeling that they do their due diligence on that. They probably do some research. <laughs> well, they've they've come up now with a way to actually uh, upload. Mm. machine learning tools and machine learning apps inside the cloud. Uh, so now people will be able to access uh, AI tools and and AI builders, things like that, from the cloud, and it will give a lot more people than just these super elite companies access to be able to work in artificial intelligence and actually, like, come up with the the neural nets yeah. and things like that that to to make AI better uh, uh, which brings you brings us all of us we're all together in this uh, to the next part which is dueling neural networks mm-hmm. which is how they are training AI yeah that I actually read that one that was actually pretty cool it was pretty cool because like the the AI as it stands they can't really they're really limited in what they can 
do and, and process and stuff. So the, they, the example they, they gave, because like, it's all algorithms. It's yeah. just one algorithm after another, after another, after another. Well, the, but you can only set so well, many. The example they gave was you can show an AI system a thousand photos, and it will tell you out of all of those photos which ones are pictures of pedestrians. But if you were to try and be like, all right, now come up with your own version yeah. of a pedestrian, it can't do that because it has no imagination. Right, okay. But these dueling neural networks have, have gotten around that by using competing uh, computers, competing networks. One of them is basically the, the fool network, like a slave network, that all it does is come up with slight different, uh, variations of these pictures. So it'll take a picture, and then it'll tweak it just a little bit. Maybe put a third arm on a guy, or like have a double-decker car or something, where it just tweaks the image. And then the other computer network is basically programmed to uh, differentiate between what is fake and what is real. And eventually after battling for... So it's almost like simulating a thought process. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what they're yeah. doing. Okay. And so eventually after battling each other for hours, days, months, the faker computer actually starts to trick the, the computer that is like trying to... Yeah. Pick. Reason its way through. Yeah, you know, like how can I make it look less fake, less fake, yeah. less fake, less fake, while still being fake, while still being a fake picture. And so it is. We're we're using two networks battling each other to create an imagination for yeah. computers. So we want these computers to be smarter, so they're nicer to us when they take over. Yeah, because right. when I'm a slave, I want like treats and stuff. Yeah. All I know is that I've so never thrown a remote controller. <laughs> I've never hit my game systems. Oh, the things I used to do to my old Nintendo. I don't yeah. want to hear about it, man. That's got to be gross. Back. Elbow drops from the top rope. You're going to load my damn game. <laughs> I was one of those frustrated kids. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm on the last level. And, you know, back in those days, they didn't have like save. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have last three lives, lives and that's it. Something. That's right. Yeah, you get to the last level and then shit just freezes on you or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I'll throw it through a fucking window. Well, that was the oh, most frustrating thing, like, Especially thing, with some of the games like, who remembers Zombies Ate My Neighbor? You guys remember yeah, that, that I, game? I heard it. I love that game. But what was really frustrating about that game is it had like well over a hundred levels. Mm. And each level took like at least five to ten minutes to beat. And there was no save point. Yeah. So you could get to like level seventy and die, and it's fucking over. You gotta start. <laughs> it's level over, one. man. Yeah. It's over. Start over. Go again. Some of those levels get really hard. Oh yeah. It's just like a big middle finger to you, you know? Like, give me a save point. Okay, what's a babble fish? It's a fish that talks a lot. <laughs> kind of. Uh, you're close. Yeah. You've seen Hitchhiker's Guide, right? Have you seen Hitchhiker's Guide? Or read is, the book? Is that one of the movies, one of the many, many references that I throw out that you have no idea about? No. Yes. All right, well, you've seen Hitchhiker's Guide. Yes. You've seen Hitchhiker's Guide? Babblefish. Yes. They go in your ear. Right. And they translate all universal languages. Yeah. Correct. There was actually, there was originally a book, and they actually made a website, a translation website called Babblefish a long time ago that was exactly that. It was before we had Google Translate, there was Babblefish. Well, what they put down for 2018 as their number six is near real-time translation app and yeah. earbuds, which they call the Babblefish earbuds. Yeah. But you basically you put an earpiece into your ear, and you have them speak into your phone, and near real-time, like they speak... It translates and then it sends mm -hmm. what they're saying. I've heard of that into yeah. your ear. Yeah. And but then, but then it goes both ways because you can touch a button on here and you speak, and it comes out through the phone in their yeah. language. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like you both have Dixie cups with a string, except <laughs> that string magically translates language. Yeah, I feel like it would be very cool and casual. Like if you just like, like just had the phone and like you were able to just like. I think. 
know, there's so many things I know, I feel in like language it'd be tough. that it'd be tough. don't translate very well. Like, you know, idioms like, uh, I have a green thumb or something. You yeah. Know, yeah. How is that going to translate? Your thumb right? looks fine to yeah. me. Yeah. Colloquialisms yeah. are never going to translate so. properly. Well, I imagine that they, they've gone through stuff like are that. Are you like pushing they, my leg? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, there's got to be someone in, you know, who's programmed this stuff who's like, you know, people with these different languages, like, what are some weird things people say in your language that don't necessarily translate? You've talked to people from this place. What, like, what doesn't really translate from your culture to theirs? And then they go through and they kind of add that stuff in. And maybe maybe it just turns it into a different colloquialism that means the same thing. Well, like, there, there are some colloquialisms that just become the word, like, especially in other languages. Like, a good example is French. Mm-hmm. In French... Their word for orgasm isn't a separate word for orgasm. It it's put, it's small death is what yeah, the, the word. Death. Yeah, it's like the little death. Yeah, petit so, mort or something. But, like yeah, that it's, it's 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 la, la petit mort. Yeah. So that's how they say orgasm, and it's just become like oh, it's the little death, and that's what it became. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it would be just as simple to take some of our things like green thumb, like put that to a translator. I have a green thumb, and then it spits out. I'm good with plants. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, like it, it should it be able to down, eventually, right? Get there. The idiom, but yeah, it'll take it'll take a lot of programming. <laughs> a long time. There, we have a lot of idioms. We do, yeah. especially yeah. A lot of in we English. Don't even think in about especially yeah. in English. Oh, English yeah. is like when you go over and you like start looking at other languages and even studying like bits of their grammar. Like, you translate it into English, and it sounds like caveman talk sometimes it's just like oh there's no flavor in here it's just like straight to the point on every sentence and it's just very it feels bland but it's because we have very flowery language in english Mm -hmm. you never really realize until you do talk to someone who is not a native english speaker it's very like vibrant we we do throw in a lot of idioms and a lot of like uh symbolism and just colorful language and unnecessary words like how how many words are there for bad? Like, I guarantee you there are, like, hundreds of words for bad in English where you might max out at 15 or 20 in other languages. Yeah. Like, and then there's the, the connotation and the denotation mm-hmm. of things. It was one of my like, favorite. Who's bad? Mm-hmm. <laughs> do, do. That's all I can do. Yeah. I, like, I've, I've been watching a lot of stand-up from, like, foreign comics lately just because Netflix saw me watch one once by mistake. <laughs> you and, might like... Here, Other weird here's guy. some Spanish Is it the one about ass? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> you seem very uh, excited yeah. about that. Is it the one about ass? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, like, the few, like, I have watched a few that actually are in English, and they talk about, you know, one of the most difficult things in English is learning where you put the stress on the word. Mm-hmm. Because you can, you in English, you can put the stress on the wrong oh, syllable of the, the word. Uh, that's the French sign film. Yeah, Gad, Gad Amala, or whatever his name is. Um... You can put the stress on the wrong part of the word, and suddenly you have no idea. Like an English per an English speaking person can't understand you. Like I have no idea what the fuck you're saying. Like, <laughs> like what do you mean contribute? What the fuck does con- contribute? Oh, contribute! I got you. That means something completely different. Yeah. Like it's just insignificant. Funny. Insignificant. Like yeah, it, it, it just. It's it's really weird how our language is so that's boondocks. difficult or even to learn. The way that's you can say like, thanks, "Hey, guys. watch, hey, please watch where you're going," versus "Hey, watch where you're going." It's, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, but in that instance, you're tone, not you're not ta- you're not actually tone telling someone. translates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tone is universal. Unless you're German. But like, if you take in those words, <laughs> we are always angry. <laughs> we're, we're we're taking like a like a masked politeness, mm-hmm. and then we just eventually turned it into something aggressive over time. Like, please watch where you're going. In those basic words is not very aggressive. No. Please watch where you are going. Oh yes, I was intending on continuing to do that, but we've taken it. And what "watch where you're going" means is you almost fucking hit me. Like stay out of my way. <laughs> like you're in my fucking way. But we mask it with politeness, so yeah. it would be a little bit different, I think, in translation. Yeah. And there's a lot of words that even the, the people that yeah. g- grew up like uh, in French and in Spanish. Their goodbye mm-hmm. uh, is adios and adieu. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you break those words down, they are the exact same word. Adios means to God. Adieu means to God. Mm-hmm. Let's go with God. Yes, both of those mean to God. But if you were to look at a Spanish-speaking person and they said adios, and you were like to God. 
they wouldn't think yeah. to God because in their mind, adios means it's a separate connector. It's like, a separate connector. It's a connector. separate yeah. reference point. And like I find myself doing that with words all the time, even in English. Like I'll be looking at a word and it. It just dawn on me, like, I'll just find the word's root out of nowhere, like, oh, shit, oh, okay, like, uh, yeah, that makes sense, sure. And then, like, now I just have that part of the word that I just know it's from yeah. something else, but if you were to just tell me that separately, I wouldn't make the connection. Mm. It's like, um, you know, if someone were to say, like, uh, is this an interrogative sentence? Like, most people don't think interrogative and say, oh, I know what that means. Yeah. But if you were to say interrogation, they would know exactly what that is. That's right. where some guy's ripping out your fingernails and asking you a bunch of questions. <laughs> so, like, yeah, that's when, you, when you... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so when you take, you know, this word that you completely have your mind wrapped around and you have this other word, you just find the similarities and you're like, oh. But but even, even like, words that are... They're not even spelled, they don't contain each other, but, like, try and trial. Like... Try comes from trial, like mm -hmm. the trial of doing something, but it's just been shortened to try. But for the most people, you're not going to like associate those two words as having the same root. It's most like people, tried like, and true. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if you have already gone through trial, you have been tried. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I thought it was really, I took Latin for a couple of years. Language is awesome. I, just, I love it. <laughs> I enjoyed it so much. Etymology. <laughs> A lot of fun. Isn't that a soybean? I think my favorite word was though, uh, <laughs> it was focket, which means to make in Latin. Mm -hmm. And I found unnecessary reasons <laughs> to use it for mm -hmm. for other reasons. Well, I know fock means to hit, right? Like F O K. Well, in German. Yeah. Uh, focket. Well, I, I think it was spelled F A C E T, oh. but it was to make. So let's get back on topic. Faucet? Right, My top. I wrote no, this shit down. Okay. Oh. <sighs> you know I hate not go making a list yes. and not getting all the way yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. So, zero carbon natural gas. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was actually what mm -hmm. I read about solar panels. This it was today. <laughs> so <laughs> I read something about solar panels. I don't know what it was. I feel like I read no, something I very recently about solar panels. Oh yeah, a few hours ago. Um, in zero carbon natural gas, someplace out in Texas, I want to say Texas, y'all can't argue with me, um, they are working out a way to recycle the emissions from natural gas power plants mm -hmm. and basically taking the CO2 that would generally be released, uh, putting it back into the plant, superheating it until it almost gets to like a plasma state. And then using that to to actually spin turbines. Mm. So they're going to like take the emissions and then turn the emissions into a fluid and spin turbines. That's and cool. then they want to, since they're going to have this byproduct of like an actual CO2 like chemical form or whatever, they want to be able to sell this byproduct. Yeah. Unfortunately, the issue is that besides like a little bit of fertilizer or like maybe a couple other things for like metal working or something like that. Nobody is buying CO2. Yeah. So they have to like figure out how to market that and where they can use these excess chemicals. But if that be the case, if they can figure out a way to, to off, off their offset their spending by selling this this product from yeah. their emissions, it would basically create clean energy, uh, not 100% right, renewable, not, yeah. uh, which is unfortunate. But still, as far as all of the clean energy technology, the carbon footprints and stuff like that, that that's a win. Is, yeah. yeah, as far as all the tech that we have right now about like clean energy, this is the best concept going forward that actually has merit behind it besides just science fiction writers yeah um and and they were talking about how they might be able to use the co2 uh fluid to actually create uh more more reactive solar panels okay um so like it can because it can hold the heat that much better because CO2 holds heat. 
He can it hold the it heat. didn't get into the specifics. It just mentioned like a couple of things that yeah. it could be used for, but it would they would sense. have to sell it. They'd have to pitch it to these yeah. other big companies and get them to buy it for these specific things. Hey, guys, um, want to buy a product? Next on the list. That's exactly how you sales pitch. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys, want to use buy a product? jugs of CO2. <laughs> what do you mean you're breathing that out right now? <laughs> Uh, perfect. I got jugs. <laughs> <laughs> and they are nice, let me tell you. Uh, perfect online privacy. See, that's a big thing, right? People are yeah. like, don't steal my social security card and my, my bank information and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Now, admittedly, I did not read that full article on that one, but perfect it did online. leave me with questions. That may have been answered if I'd read the full article. Uh, Maybe. The way uh, it left me with questions, and when you say it left me with questions, you mean I left it and I had questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but basically... It, it walked was, away unanswered. Yeah, the idea is that you don't have to give out your bank information with every transaction online, or you don't have to give out your social security number and you know all these other things that, you, you, that we have to have do to. a lot now that you wouldn't have to with this perfect Which uh, privacy thing. Which would be amazing. But... It seems to me you've got to put it somewhere. Maybe you uh, well, have you would, like a master code or something that that's basically exactly replaces what all is. of that information? Uh, from what I read, and they never actually mentioned it, mm -hmm. but everything that I thought when I was reading it, Enigma. Uh, the old Nazi... Uh, the, the cryptography. The cryptography yeah. thing where they sent all of these things and they had like a revolving mm -hmm. key. And that key was like the master key to like figure out that day's yeah. cryptographs and basically what uh, perfect online privacy will do is you will create like a validation that will have all of the the specific information or whatever to to validate you once you're validated it like puts you into this uh system mm -hmm. where the only way to uh, break the code is to have that key. Yeah. So basically a system on one end has the key, a system on the other end has the key, and anybody that intercepts the message in between, no matter what point, mm. they're just going to get a bunch of jumbled nonsense. Right. And there will be no Encrypted way numbers. for them to break it without having yeah. the key. Um, the only issue with that, what the article said, was that what happens if some horrible bad guy gets a hold of that key? Mm. Like, say, you know, the entire United States goes onto this system, and even if it's a revolving key or whatever, still, yeah. what happens if they get a hold of it for a brief moment? They're going to be able to access Thousands. everyone's personal information. Uh, so that's that's the issue we right really now. Want to place is that it, a lot of trust in that one entity. Exactly, yeah. and who is going to be in charge yeah, really... of that entity? Like, will it will the government step in and be like, "All right, well, we're going to have to monitor this because it's too much for a private company." You know, so I mean, there there's ramifications to both the government and a private company. That's a lot of. I mean, information's power. We know that to be true. Yeah. So. But a lot, you know, there is a lot of theft out there. A lot of identity theft. A lot of just people, just hacking into to systems and grabbing bits of of data. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is this supposed to help with it? Because I can see the convenience from a convenience side. I I hate having to keep up with all the different you know passwords and. Mm -hmm. whatnot and social security and my bank card information you know i've typed into ah. so many things you'd think i'd know the number by now by heart yeah i feel like just when i do though the bank sends me a new card because someone has stolen my right information when i finally you know so from a convenient standpoint i can see how oh yes the lazy person inside me would just love to not have to do that but anymore. it's basically like a digital validation but print. is it more secure yes that was the actual point of it mm -hmm. was being more secure okay um but it's also, you know, good for lazy people that don't want to have to go to the car rental place and don't want to have to go to, you know, every single spot that they got to go and show their ID or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, they could just have this one validation number mm -hmm. that they could go into their system and pff, 
see that you are who you are. Yeah. Isn't that what our social security number is? Uh, kind of. Uh, would... But the social security number is crackable. Like, they, they, it's actually coded. Certain part of the number is the state you're born in. Certain part of the number is, like, uh, you know, the order or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, so there is... A it's way to figure out who somebody is just off of their social security. Not card. universal. I mean, you know, I can't use my social security card to go rent a car. Yeah. I can't use my social security card to go buy some textbooks off eBay. It doesn't have your, pic your, your picture on it. It doesn't, doesn't have your face. Have, yeah, it doesn't have anything that would really... It's just a number yeah. until you... I mean, from what I can tell, so is this. So... But yeah. it sounds like but to me also that it's letters? attached to so oh. much more. And <laughs> symbols. Yeah. The way, um, it, doing something this the way you're describing it, it has your bank information and, and whatnot too, correct? Yeah. It, it seems like it encompasses more of your actual, I guess, your your footprint, your identity. Yeah. And it, and the main thing is that it's a super cipher. <laughs> so it's like basically everything that you already have out on the internet can now be out there on the internet, but all under a very specific locked cryptogram. Yeah. So that way, no hacker can read and interpret your information without having that master key. Mm -hmm. um, so this could potentially, in the right hands and used the right way, stop a lot of identity theft. Yeah, yeah. stop all Ideally. of it. Stop all of it. Unless it's someone that is actually at the source. And if that be the case, then at least investigators know exactly where to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I feel like I'd seeing it in action. I think would make a lot more sense to me. But yeah, like as of right now, it feels like give me all your information, and we're gonna attach that to this number right here. Hold on to that number. Don't let anybody see it. There you go. Well, it wouldn't be like that so much as it would be like here's this thing, mm. and here are the twenty thousand digits for your key. And you notice how each one of these digits is constantly changing? Well, it's changing in perfect time with these digits over here. So they can always interpret it, but yeah. to, the, to a, an average person, it's just 20,000 random digits that are just... Yeah, but that, what I'm asking, like, how do you end up interacting with that then? Like, how, like what do I do to buy that, that scone on the internet? I don't know. It's the same as well. You shouldn't you buy scones on the would. internet. Because it's just the. <laughs> I want my internet scone. Internet to to scone. ship your information right to you. them, rather than like you typing it up and entering it into their database mm. or whatever. You would just send that validation packet or whatever. Okay. And, or and theoretically, they will, if it's so in that, tune, wouldn't you just hit buy and maybe it would recognize it? Like perhaps maybe you just type. Yeah. This if code if into the your system computer, is is one hundred percent integrated integrated and is is completely up then at that at that point yes There's you would no just have to hit buy, buy yeah. and then it's boom bought three days later it arrives to you right. <laughs> and <laughs> you don't have to worry about anybody stealing your banking or routing numbers or anything like that you don't have to put it into their database because it's been put through yeah, because and it's change in code exactly and it's until, been vetted until your kid comes on your computer and hits buy that actually happened. Um, there was an interesting. Or your cat walks across story. the floor. <laughs> I, I think I read it this year. It was, um, you know, it was a mom and a dad, and they had an Amazon account. And Alexa, they... buy Purina cat chow. <laughs> this little girl was, I guess, really obsessed with Pokemon, mm. and so she just bought herself like a bunch of Pokemon plushies. But the mom had almost no idea until all these Amazon packages started arriving that she hadn't, yeah. she hadn't ordered, and she opened them up, and she goes, "Oh wait." But it was just because she had everything set up on her, mm -hmm. you know, account to where the little girl just had to swipe, put it in the cart. And she didn't know what she was doing. She didn't understand actual money. She's oh, yeah. just like, I want this thing. And here's this thing telling me I can have it. Yep. So I don't know. They didn't really teach her a lesson. Though. They're like, well, you can't have it now. We're just going to wrap them up and give them to you for Christmas. <laughs> so she still got the stuff. You still spent thousands of dollars of mommy and daddy's hard oh, money. And, uh, I mean, I'm yeah, you can still have stuff. <laughs> So, you know, that sounds like a lazy parent to me. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, like, oh, God. You did our job for us. Oh, that, that would be nice. Like, well, this is every birthday and Christmas present for the next, like, 18 years, so. Hopefully you still have Pokemon plushies well, this much then. Oh, well, you're gonna. More than that, it's like, uh -huh. yeah, oh, man, I really, now I don't have to go out and buy presents. But more than that, I think it's like, oh. 
I really don't want to email all of those <laughs> sellers. Yeah. And individually Fuck it. I'm just I'm going to put it all into an attic. Yeah. And I'll just give it to them periodically. Yeah, twice a year. <laughs> I know this isn't important to you right now, but no more college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right, we're almost at time. So what Genetic fortune telling is next. Yeah. Um, we've all heard about it. You know, they've been tracking the, the genome for human DNA. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're getting good at it. They're getting real good at mm -hmm. it. And they predict that within a few years, children will actually be able to get DNA report cards at birth. Yeah. That will give you statistics on likelihood for disease, mm -hmm. uh, likelihood of how intelligent they will be, yeah. uh, the likelihood of all physical characteristics. Wow. Um, and so basically they've narrowed it down to where they can like take a little piece of your baby mm -hmm. and using their genetic markers tell you like, oh, they're going to die at 64 years old to stomach cancer. Yeah. Now, see, it's I really don't like how you said they take a piece of your baby. Yeah, like, not an important piece. I Probably feel like, like the foreskin biopsy <laughs> sounds cool, but like, like they just they just used the foreskin, clipped the off a little leftover. piece of your baby. What if it's a girl? Girls don't have foreskin. No. Why would you not? No. The the girl on the show says no. Oh <laughs> man! So what do y'all get clipped at birth? Y'all don't, don't have subject. to go through a birthing process, a rite of passage, just, to be not a, in America to be a person. We just come out this way. Oh man! And it's good enough, I guess. That's all right. Yeah. I I was real young, and I do not remember, and I don't mind, uh, yeah. because I've seen uncircumcised penises, Shit's and weird. they look floppy and weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I keep hearing about uncircumcised <laughs> penises today. <laughs> You know, anyway, woman, go yeah. on. I feel like it's mean to say, yeah, I'm really glad that baby boys go through huh? that and that they do that. You guys, but I'm... You guys get it at home. <laughs> okay. All right. Put it away. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, this, this... I can see the good to that. You know, it'd be helpful to know about certain diseases and things that, you know, because ideally, hopefully we could combat that. It'd mm. kind of be good to know where your child's intelligences lie because then, you know, you're not wasting your time putting your kid through band camp when he's, you know, maybe never going to demonstrate <laughs> the ability to, I don't know. Yeah. I could see where According that, to your report card, you got a 76 IQ, little boy. <laughs> I see this going poorly when I'm it comes not going to, like, insurance, though. Like, no one's going to insure you. Yeah, because if, you if have... If you're going to die at 64 stomach cancer, like, well, there you go. That's what's going to happen. But see, you now, should start saving for that now. But see, but you're also thinking about, like, insurance-wise, but also thinking about, like, predictive ability-wise, like... If it says, you know, I have a propensity for, you know, obesity at birth just because my genes are in it, then my parents have that information. They can start, like, making the efforts to combat that, you know? Like, well, yeah. nothing is set in stone. Like, if, if you have, if, like, if your family has a propensity for diabetes, then you could get diabetes. And you may not necessarily not get diabetes by being in good shape mm. but being in good healthy shape definitely is like it's a benefit and it yeah. helps combat the the effects of diabetes in a big no, I'm, way I'm so curious. you could definitely use that information to lower your costs as well because well yeah i might get diabetes but i'm also i also have a two percent body fat and i'm in amazing shape and you're extending your own life with the knowledge you, you wouldn't need insurance as much because Mm. Manifest destiny, motherfuckers. <laughs> At the same time, though, I don't know. I, I feel like it almost diminishes quality of life. At the same time, though, if you're always kind of focused on that end game, what are you teaching your children? Yeah, that's another issue that you have to deal with. Is, is like if you already, if you know that this is going to happen, and you know your parents know certain preemptively, things, like can if you use Americans with Disabilities Act or whatever? Like, could you? Say that that was uh, un like unconstitutional mm -hmm. or whatever for an insurance company to refuse you because in the future you might become disabled or you have or taking you know, it a that step. law would get destroyed. They, I mean, they already they already look at family history and stuff to to determine risk factors. So they probably just push it that way and that like we're already doing this. We're just doing this to a greater extent. Yeah, yeah. but. 
But there's nothing in my genetic code that says I might get real pissed off and burn down an insurance company. There might be. <laughs> Let's take a look at this card. Let's, yeah. Well, it's right here. So, it says uh, you're associated. Right right down here at the bottom, it says funny might burn stuff down. <laughs> you like yep, spark so fire, the, huh? We've already called the police and the fire department, <laughs> just yep. in case. JIC. That uh, reminds me a little bit of uh, Civil War II. Yeah. yeah. Which goes into a lot of different things when it comes to... Uh, I mean, uh, Minority Airport was essentially the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know... Pre-crime. Yeah. Wow. You know, I think this, this right here may have been... World. This may have been one of our longest shows ever. Number 10. <laughs> Number on, the, on MIT's top 10. Yeah, go. Number 10. Go fast. Quantum computing is already a thing. Yes, it and is. And those are basically, instead of using zeros and ones... They have quantum algorithms yeah. instead of zeros and ones. They're called... It's basically where zeros are ones. They're ones and zeros simultaneously. Yeah, yeah like it's entire uh, already worked out equations, like enormous algorithms mm -hmm. that, that represent these pieces. So when they're doing all these super speed math, they're using like already done math to do more math even faster. Yeah, yeah. it's Schrodinger's computer. Uh, now, what their issue is, is that they have designed these quantum computing uh, techniques, mm -hmm. but they don't really know what they're going to do with this amount of processing. Yeah. Uh, so Watch more Netflix. Yes. Obviously, <laughs> stream more live TV <laughs> is what they should do. Yeah. Uh, increase my damn broadband width. Yeah. Uh, but that's not what they're going to do. No. In fact, they are going to use them to design molecules. Yeah. And to increase the amount of uh, science that we are capable of making, new proteins mm. for medicines uh, oh. that are that are better at fighting diseases, um, uh, new materials that are stronger uh, in bonding and cohesion. Like yeah. basically, we've never been able to wrap our mind around like or wrap a computer's mind around like an electron but you know with quantum computing they will actually be able to get it down to a science <laughs> all right then with that <laughs> what did you learn today well today Dave. i learned that kate has seen none of my favorite movies any of them not no one. None of them. I'm so sorry. Well, we'll, we'll fix it that. later. We'll yeah. have a movie marathon. Yeah, we'll do that. Have Would you not know? rated his CD movie collection? A DVD collection? No, she hasn't. His oh, CD movie collection. His CD movie collection. What do y'all call those Jesus. now? Jesus. What do the kids call those? DVDs? Yeah. I learned so much today that it's hard to really condense it into one thing. Yeah. Um, Use an algorithm. Make a one a zero. Make a zero or one. Just pull out some binary code here. But I think if I had to condense it down to one thing, I would say that today I learned about genetic predetermination becoming not just a thing of science fiction. Yeah. And to be quite frankly, that also scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Justin? I learned that there are some things in life you can't buy. But for everything else, there's talkie box. Yep, that's true. He went with the very first thing. Yep. From the episode, you see what well, he the very first there? thing was live from Shamir Studios. It's talking about yeah, but talking about his podcast. He didn't learn that. What did you learn today, Jason? Uh, I learned that Sophia the robot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we never, we the never talked about. Never it, talked yeah. about. It. We never brought it up, but it got brought up in pre-show, yeah. and so I researched it and I learned about that shit. And it's apparently a social robot, she's which I think means a sex toy. Yeah. But she's very witty. Very witty. Yeah, uh, she's got uh, very weird facial tics that scare me. <laughs> yep. And no 62 facial... Uh, um, Actuators or something? Yeah, like no, well, the 62 facial expressions. Oh. She seriously needs a wig, though. Mm -hmm. They do that to be showy. To show the giant robot brain? Yeah. No. Okay, well, they should put a wig on her. Yeah. First, <laughs> yes. Because I can see line. robot all yeah, over. Sucks. I actually I have a, I have two hashtags today. Not very exciting hashtags mm -hmm. except for the first one. Hashtag Keanu Reeves. 
Man's an American treasure. I'm, I'm not going to... Uh, you can't say it enough. Is that whole thing that was the hashtag? Yeah. Keanu yeah. Reeves, the man's an American treasure. That's I mean, the reason we stole Hawaii, <laughs> was for Keanu Reeves. Uh, we just needed how about, how about, how about, let, let's just simplify it. Keep it simple. Just do hashtag Keanu Reeves, American treasure. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then the other one is hashtag token celebrity. We want to know who your token celebrity would be during the apocalypse. Tell us with the hashtag... Token celebrity. That's right. And tell us why. Don't just elect your yeah. favorite celebrity. Tell us and, why. Because we'll make real irrational assumptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And we'll call you out by name. And Get a conversation. Thanks going. to our patrons, uh, Brian and Bex. And, our uh, two favorite bees. Yeah. Woo! They're the bees' knees. Ooh. Bees have fantastic knees. I don't know if you knew that. Ooh, I did not. The bees' oh, yeah. knees. Uh, if you want to become a patron of Talkie Box, go to patreon.com slash Talkie Box, probably. And uh, click on the button that says uh, become a patron or whatever it says. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Uh, become a patron or Do whatever. I don't know. Oh, it must be the button they were talking about. And you can get the cool uh, cool different prizes that they're getting, like stickers, T-shirts, behind-the-scenes footage, mm -hmm. all that kind of cool stuff. Woo! Uh, yeah, a no-wet willy pass? Yeah. We will not wet willy you if you donate. Or if you become a patron of like $100 a week or something, I don't know. And I got some sloppy willy. She, he sure does. Gross. Maybe even a chance like to be on the show, wasn't that a thing? You gotta yeah, scrape possibly it. a chance to be, be on, on, on scrape uh, the podcast or some other video it. that we uh, do. Meet these lovely people uh, real uh, time. Maybe Come on, some of us are lovely. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. And everybody. I don't know why I